This is just a quick video to look at the trend for ionic charge and the trend for valence electrons. So to understand both of these really important trends that we use in chemistry all the time, and then to relate them. How is ionic charge related to the number of valence electrons for an atom? That's the question we'll answer right after we go over these trends. So ionic charge, here's the trend. Group one, all of these form ions with a one plus ionic charge. Sometimes it's just written plus. Group two, two plus ionic charge. And it's positive because they've lost electrons. They've lost valence electrons, either through forming a chemical bond or perhaps another process. Skip the transition metals, a little bit complicated. And we go over here, eventually we get to the negative ions. For example, group 17, sometimes called 7A here. They gain a valence electron, often from one of these elements over here. When they gain it, because electrons are negative, we get a negative charge for these ions. It's a little bit more nuanced than this simple table here, but this gives you the idea. For valence electrons, that's a little bit easier. Group one, one valence electron. Group two has two. Again, skip those transition metals, three, four, five, six, seven, and so on. When we're talking about valence electrons, we're talking about the electrons in the highest energy level. Okay, so we know the trend for both of these. How are they related? Let's look at sodium. That's a good example. Sodium has 11 total electrons. If we write the electron configuration, it looks like this. So these numbers up top, these are the number of electrons in these orbitals here. You'll notice that the second energy level right here has two plus six, eight, that's full. The third energy level only has one. And we can even see that here. If we go down one, two, three, this is period three. And we go over right here is sodium. All of these have one valence electron. They all end in S1, 1S1, 2S1, 3S1, 4S1, and so on. So sodium is going to lose this electron. Maybe it gives it to one of these elements over here that's negative, but it loses that electron. And now this outer shell right here is full, but it's lost a negative charge. That means we're going to have Na plus. So it'll be plus one. Here's our sodium group one, one valence electron, one plus is the ionic charge. In all of these elements here, they're going to lose that one valence electron to give us a one plus ionic charge. Let's look at something that gains an electron. How about chlorine? Chlorine here, 17. So since it's neutral, doesn't have a charge yet, it's not an ion, that'll be the same number as the electrons if you count them up, 17. And take a look at the third energy level. That's the highest energy level, seven valence electrons like we see right here. So if chlorine could get one more, that would give it eight in its highest energy level, that'd be very stable. So it could get that one from the sodium. This one the sodium lost could take that right there. Thank you, sodium. Now we have eight in the highest energy level, but we've gained a negative charge. We've gained the electron. We're going to call that Cl minus. Because we have opposite charges, a plus and a minus, they'll be attracted together and they'll form an ionic bond. So we can look at the number of valence electrons in the configuration here, in the electron configurations, and figure out if it's going to lose or gain electrons. That tells us the ionic charge. So try this. We have magnesium right here in group two. What's the ionic charge of magnesium going to be? We see that the second energy level is full. We have two in that third energy level. So we're going to lose those two. Maybe they're transferred to one of these negative elements up here. Since we've lost two negative charges, two plus. So magnesium, that's right about here. That's two plus, like everything here in group two. Let's try one more. What is the ionic charge on fluorine going to be? What will its charge be when it forms ions? Second energy level, we have seven. We only need one more. So maybe we take one from one of these elements here, and instead of five, we get six, and that means we have F minus, the fluoride ion. So it has a one minus ionic charge. And here's fluorine right here, so it would be about right here on this periodic table. Let's wrap up. I want to show you a periodic table that's a little more detailed with ionic charge. The more general table we used works pretty well, but do note the ones that we think of as four plus, we really don't have ionic charges for that, as well as some of these elements down here. And you can see the transition metals here and here. We really have to look at what they're bonded to figure their ionic charge out. 
This is Dr. B comparing trends for ionic charge with the number of valence electrons. Thanks for watching.